time now for our regular Listen Up segment where we debate an issue of public interest. Tonight we're looking at veganism. There was a time when a plant-based diet was the preserve of a tiny minority of people. But in recent years it's boomed in popularity. Tonight's proposition comes from Ed Winters, who's an author and vegan educator. And Ed joins us to debate his arguments with the beef and sheep farmer Martin Kennedy, who's president of the National Farmers Union Scotland. Thank you both very much indeed for joining us. Um, Ed, to you first of all, um, you say that animal farming, um, the, the animal farming industry is outdated and violent. Is that really the case? I mean, absolutely it is. When we look at animal suffering and animal harm and indeed animal death, no other industry on the planet causes more unnecessary suffering and harm to animals than the animal farming industries. And so it is definitely a violent industry. Uh, Martin, what's your response to that? It's outdated, violent, and it causes unnecessary harm to animals. It's, yeah, it's such a shame that we're seeing or hearing such a, a, an ill-informed, uh, blinkered approach to this. That's not the case at all. We, if we were to treat um, animals in the way that we're actually treating human beings in society just now, and I'm not just talking about the, the situation we have in Ukraine, but we treat human beings in a serious manner just now, we would be locked up if we treated um, uh, animals in the way we're actually treating people in society right now. You know, we need people to have food, we need people to have water and shelter. That's not happening in many parts of society just now. We, we are proud of our animal health and welfare standards in Scotland and the whole of the UK we will have and we've we rightly claimed to have some of the highest animal health and welfare there is right across the world and we look after our animals for a good reason. I mean Ed, what, what, what evidence have you got to suggest that it's outdated and violent? I mean Martin's saying it's, it's you know the, the UK standards are excellent. Well, I mean, Martin says that we wouldn't do things to humans that we do to animals, but we do put animals in gas chambers. In fact, 90% of the pigs in the UK are killed in gas chambers where they're gassed to death using an aversive concoction of carbon dioxide. On top of that, of course, all the other animals we kill, we kill at a fraction of their lifespan by cutting their throats. We selectively breed animals so that they reach slaughter weight like chickens in six weeks and die of organ failure and ammonia from the farms that they are kind of kept in, burns their eyes and even can cause blindness. So actually, no, the way that we treat humans in society is significantly better because we don't gas humans in the UK. And of course, we don't put them to, into slaughterhouses at six months old or 18 months old in the case of beef cattle and, and cut their throats. M Martin, do you want to respond to that? Because what, what Ed's describing is, hor is horrific. <laughs> Yeah, it is absolutely horrific. That's not, that is, this, is not, this is not the case at all. I and mean, when you look at the, the welfare that's done through abattoirs that's carried out now, we're not the same as what happens maybe in some other parts of the world. That is not happening here. Um, and we rely on that readily source of protein, zinc, iron, vitamin B12 that is readily available through red meat. And we, 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 we need that, meat, that source of red meat to be there for the benefit of our health, for the benefit of the climate, for the benefit of biodiversity. The backdrop that's behind me is not like that for no reason. That's been a managed landscape with livestock for you know hundreds of years. That's why it's there. We have a tremendous biodiversity in Scotland. Yes, we can do more. We've got to do more to address climate change. But the reality is when Ed's talking about emissions, he's also incorrect there as well, because the way the emissions is calculated, biogenic methane that's, that's emitted by not just animals, um, but it's also emitted by decaying uh, plants as well. That biogenic methane is actually recycled back into the ground where it originally came from. So methane, although albeit okay. is more damaging when it's in the atmosphere it's only there for for about 12 to 15 years and that carbon that methane breaks down to carbon and water and sequestered back okay. into the soil where it originally came from yeah i mean ed what's your response to that martin saying it's, it's not detriment it's not it's not causing a damage to the environment or as much as people say well, firstly, when the methane's in the environment, that's when it's causing the warming, and that methane wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the existence of the animals in the first place. So that biogenic carbon cycle that Martin's describing is, is, is utterly nonsense, to be honest with you, because the global warming happens when it's in the environment. But I also just want to go back to what Martin was saying, because Martin was saying that things that I described happening to animals don't happen here. And I'm absolutely shocked to hear that the head of the Scottish National Farmers Union could lie so blazingly and so boldly on television because everything I've just described, or I described in that moment, is standard practice in the UK. That figure about 90% of pigs being killed in gas chambers comes from DEFRA. 
So I'm not sure how Martin could deny the existence of the things that I described when they are standard legal practices outlined by the UK government okay. and outlined by even the National Farmers Union, who he right. supposedly well, represents. Let Martin respond to that accusation, please. Martin. What I, what I was arguing was that you were saying this is a brutal way of, of slaughter. That is not the case. Every, every possible thing is done for the benefit of the animal's welfare in, in a slaughterhouse, and we've got some of the best slaughterhouses in the world. And that's okay. done, and the reason they're gassed, that's done, and they were stunned for that reason. So that there is no, um, so that the benefit of the animal welfare is absolutely paramount, and we've been okay. driven to do that for a long, long time now, and we're actually proud Ed, to do that. Ed, want... Ed, hang on a second. Let, let's move on to some other areas of the argument. What about the fact that there's so many jobs that are dependent on the the animal farming industry uh, in the UK, Ed? Well, firstly, I don't think that we could ever say that gas chambers are a pleasant way to be killed. But beyond that point, there are also other ways that we can find employment uh, by using our natural world. Agriculture is just one way that we currently do. But also, of course, farmers can live off the land and do so by using other forms of carbon capture, such as, of course, rewilding that landscape. And we look at the potential of rewilding the UK countryside. We see that there's a huge potential there for carbon capture projects to be taking place, which will, of course, create subsidized economy or income, at least for animal farmers in the same way that they're currently subsidized to raise the animals that they currently do. So it's about shifting the economies of land use and not just sticking to the current paradigm because it's what we're used to. Martin. Yeah, I think yeah, I, I think that's an, an, an incredible statement. You do, you do realise that we're actually only 60% self-sufficient in food here in the UK. Food security is right at the top of so many people's agenda right now. There's a lot of the vegan diets rely on a lot of imports and imported products that we cannot produce here. And that has implications worldwide on other nations and other countries that can't actually afford that because our demand on some of the products that come from other parts of the world. Our, our situation right now is, I couldn't grow. What, what are we going to do in the backdrop that's behind me right now is perfectly we're doing it in a sustainable manner and and with new technologies now we're using natural products such as looking at seaweed and methane inhibitors so that now when you look at the the, the change in how we're actually calculating methane now is completely different to what we did 30 years ago which was totally out of date and we need that livestock in that country the jobs that's reliant on that what are we going to do if we rewild the backdrop that's behind me? That's 85% of Scotland, which is deemed less favoured areas. We cannot produce that food. So if it's rewilded, what then happens is it's rewilded. And as I said earlier on, methane then comes from decaying okay. um, uh, uh, vegetation okay. as well. Just, and just, then we get a tinder dry, tinder dry environment that if it goes briefly, into a wildfire, that's the biggest emissions you can briefly, have. Briefly, Ed, Ed, just to finish, how much public support do you think you've got for your position that we should all be vegan? It's support that's growing, and that's the important thing. Veganism is a conversation that's evolving all the time, and importantly, the science community and the scientific and environmental community is pushing for veganism because that's what the credible scientific literature is showing us. There's a reason why the United Nations and all the leading environmental organizations say one thing, and the only people okay. who are dissenting against that are the animal farmers. Very brief last word to you, Martin. On you go. Very brief. Well, I would, I would I would draw your attention to the work that Professor Alice Stanton has done with the, with, the, with the Royal College of Surgeons and our medical academics that have highlighted the benefits of red meat production and also the benefits to the environment that keeps us uh, farming in a sustainable manner and the environment we're so proud of here in Scotland. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. But a very lively discussion. Uh, Ed and Martin, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.